In this video, I'm going to go through some common questions from bivariate data on the Further Maths Exam 1, so multiple choice questions. Okay, so the first question here. Given that 92% of the variation in the number of speeding tickets issued on average to a driver can be explained by the variation in a driver's age, and the other 8% of the variation in speeding tickets issued on average to a driver can be explained by other factors, and the Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient is best given as. So, a couple of things here. When we're talking about 92% of the variation, that means that we are talking about the R squared value. Whereas here, they are asking for the Pearson's product moment correlation, so that means they are asking for R. So the first thing we need to do <coughs> is obviously find our R value. So if R squared equals 0.92, then r will equal the square root of 0 0.92. Now remember at this stage, we don't know whether that is a positive or a negative relationship, so it could be either. So when we find the square root, we end up with 0 0.959. Now, in this case, if we were to, if it was clearly that it was a positive or a negative relationship, we would then be able to pick the answer there. Um, we would probably expect that if we're looking at a driver's age and the number of tickets that over time so as they got older that the number of tickets they received actually decreased so we'd expect that to be a negative um, relationship but that's not given in the answers here it's probably definitely not a positive relationship so therefore the best answer of the options that we are given is e which is a positive or negative 0.959 Usually, though, it'll be clear that it is a positive or a negative outcome, um, so you're able to pick that best option there. Okay, on to some questions to do with seasonal indices. So the table here shows the seasonal indices for the quarterly sales of golf balls. Given that the seasonal indices for summer and spring are the same, then the value of the index for spring is. So remember, we have four seasons here, so when we actually add those together, those indices, they should equal four. And so if we don't know summer and spring, but we know they are the same number, we can say we've got 2x plus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.35, and that that will equal four. So when we solve for x, we end up with x equaling 1.425. So that means the index for both summer and spring is for 1.425, so our answer is B there. The next question, a trend line that can forecast the deseasonalized number of golf balls is given by deseasonalized number of golf balls equals 2,100 plus 125 times the quarter, where quarter one is summer 2008 and so on. So we want to find the actual number of golf balls in autumn 2010. So firstly, note it wants the actual number of golf balls. And remember, most of you will have written in your notes something along the lines of the deseasonalized value is the actual value divided by the seasonal index. Now what we know at the moment, the index for autumn is 0 0.8. We can use this equation here to get a prediction for the deseasonalized value, or the deseasonalized number of golf balls. And then we need to use this equation or this formula to convert that back to the actual value. So firstly, if quarter one is summer 2008 and we want the value for autumn 2010, we need to work out well which quarter are we going to sub in to the equation or the formula above. And so some of you will write that out, but we can say that autumn 2010 is quarter 10. Okay, so my deseasonalized golf balls will be 2100 plus 125 times 10. And that means I end up with um, 3350 golf balls as my deseasonalized value. So my actual will be. 3,350 uh, times my index of 0 
or I can sub it into the formula above and solve for the actual value. Okay, and I end up there with 2,680. And so the answer, C. Okay, this next question is um, quite common. So, and it often stumps quite a few students. Given that the set of bivariate data, we have the mean of X is 10, mean of Y is 7, R value of negative 0.6, standard deviation of X 3, standard deviation of Y 2, the equation of the least squares regression line. So whenever you see these five values, they're given to you in any form, and they're asking for an equation of the least squares regression line, you need to use the formula where B, or your gradient, is given by R times standard deviation of Y over standard deviation of X, and you need to use for your y-intercept or a value, you need to use mean of y minus b, the answer from above, times mean of x. Okay, so you will always have all of the information available. It's about recognizing that that's what this question wants you to do. So firstly, let's find the gradient because we can see the gradients are different in the options we've been given. So B will equal in this case R, so negative 0.6 times standard deviation of Y, which is 2, over standard deviation of X, which is 3, and we get a value of negative 0.4. So already we can look at the options and we can knock out A, B, and E. So the only difference with the two to the left is the Y intercept. We need to go ahead and find this value of A now. So in this case, A will equal mean of Y, so 7 minus our value of B that we found, negative 0.4 times mean of X, 10. Be careful, we are minusing a negative number, um, and that's a common error. So either put it in brackets or change it to a plus, and we end up with 11 there. So that means the answer is C. Okay, this question here, we're given a scatter plot and we're told that we have a negative association between maximum daily temperature and the number of umbrellas sold. And so here's our scatter plot, and it says down below, a least squares regression line is used to model this data. Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient is found to be negative 0.7657. So we're saying R is negative 0.7650. If the outlier is removed, you can see we've got an outlier here, at 17 and 8. If the outlier is removed and the least squares regression line is refitted to the remaining data, the value of the correlation coefficient will be. So if I was to take out that outlier, then I have a much stronger set of data. Now the confusing part here is if I think about my number line, if I have a stronger set of data for a negative value, I'm going from my current value of negative um, 7.65 and it's getting closer to negative 1. So that actually means, you know, it might end up at something like 0 0.9. It's getting stronger but the number itself in terms of on the number line is decreasing. Okay, so that means our, out of our options here, A has to be the answer. So it definitely will change because the relationship will become stronger. So C isn't valid. We have no way of knowing exactly how much it will affect the R value because we don't have, even though we could put that data into our calculator and recalculate it without the outlier, um, we'd be estimating some of those points. But it's not increasing, the strength is increasing, but the actual number itself is decreasing. Okay, this one we have a question relating to three median regression. So the gradient of the three median regression line above is close to two. So we need to actually perform the first parts of a three median regression line. Now on this graph, you can actually see enough with the data points to, to find the original data, put it into your calculator and ask the calculator to do the three median regression line for you. But because all it wants is the gradient, it's relatively easy and much quicker to do by hand if you know what you're doing. So firstly, we count up and we have 10 points in our scatter plot. So that means if I'm going to split it into three even sections, I'm going to have three points in the first and last and four in the middle. So remember, the middle can only ever be one above or below and the outside, upper and lower, must be even. 
So I split my data, three points, four points, three points. And now I'm just finding the median of the upper and the lower, because remember your gradient um, is given as your y upper minus your y lower over x upper minus x lower. Okay, so the median point working across this bottom section first, the middle value will be in line with the three here and working up again the middle value will be in line with five. So that point there will be three and five. And it happens to actually fall on a data point. If I look at the top section or the upper section working across, my middle value will be in line with this one here at 20. And working up the page, my middle value will be here in line with that one, which is at 15. So this time, not an actual data point, but we can still work out what that is. And it's at 20 and 15. Okay, so I substitute those values in y upper minus y lower over x upper minus x lower and I end up with 10 over 17. So my answer there is B. Another common type of question in multiple choice for bivariate data is this where we're asking for a residual value. So the question reads, after analysing the data for hours worked and the volume of production in the table below, the regression equation is production equals 763 plus 49 times hours worked. When this equation is used to predict the volume after 35 hours worked, the residual is closest to. Okay, so we need to remember that our residual value is our actual value minus our predicted. And we will always be given enough information to work out what is the actual and what is the predicted. Okay, so the actual value means we go back to the table or the data, or if it was a scatter plot, we'd go back to the scatter plot that we've originally been given and look up where is 35 hours work, and that's here. And so the actual value is 2,400. To get our predicted value, we use the equation that we've been given and we substitute in 35 hours. So our predicted, in this case, will be 763 plus 49 times 35. And so our predicted value there, we end up with 2,478. So that means my residual value will be my actual of 2,400 minus my predicted of 2478. So I end up with negative 78 as my residual value. And so there, option A as my answer. Okay, so the last type of question I'm going to look at is one which involves smoothing. So here we have a time series plot is to be constructed using the data contained in the table below. We have months and cost. Using two point moving mean with centering to smooth the data, the smooth data value for month eight is. Now we could go through and do all of the values for the whole table, but that would be time consuming. And really all we need to concentrate on is the value that lines up with month eight. Now remember when you're doing an even number, when it's two point or four point or six point, which we rarely see, but if you're doing two or four point moving um, mean smoothing, it usually will tell you that there is centering, but you need to remember there's two steps involved. So the very first thing I'm going to do is work out what's the number that lines up with the line on top of month eight, and what's the value that lines up with the line below month eight. So I'm going to use two different calculations to get those two values. Then once I've got those answers, I'm going to center them or find the average to get the actual number I'm after for month eight. Okay, so firstly, the top line, I'm going to use one above and the actual value. So there I would be doing 159 plus 139 and I'm finding the average. So to add them, divide by two and I get 149 for that value there. For the one below, again, I'm using the 139 and then one value below that. So I'm doing 139 
plus 172 divided by 2. And that time I get 155.5. So to get my final answer, I'm finding the average of those two values to center it back so it's in line with the value of eight, the eighth month. So I'm doing 149 plus 155.5 divided by 2. And then I get 152.25. So there I can see my answer is option A. So it's important to remember, again, with even number, you're doing two steps, two different calculations there. Okay, so that's just a few of the common types of questions in exam one for um, bivariate data. You tend to see a lot more um, different types of things being asked in exam two when the extended response, and they can ask usually multiple things. This gives you hopefully a good overview of the types of things to expect. Thanks.